It's the Midday News on Core TV News. I am Nifemi Oguntoye. The Nigerian authorities have issued an alert on an alleged plot by Boko Haram to disguise suicide bombers as shoemakers or cobblers with improvised explosives hidden in two boxes. Coordinator of the National Information Agency, uh, Mike Omeri discussed these at a news conference in Abuja. He also claimed that insurgents plan to use livestock to attack soft targets. Omeri, however, confirmed that Boko Haram recently released 192 persons who had been held hostage in insurgent camps. Indicate a plan by Boko Haram to use young male suicide bombers disguised as cobblers to hide explosives in their toolboxes and detonate them in soft targets areas such as markets, restaurants, ATM locations, political rallies, worship places, as well as other public places. Also, there is indication of a plan by this group to use livestock such as goats, cows, and donkeys loaded with explosives to attack chosen targets. In view of this, the general public, including all persons operating within and around the affirmation places, are advised to be vigilant and mindful of suspicious activities within their environment. Information available indicate that persons recently released by Boko Haram are presently in the custody or in a military facility in UOB. Authoritatively, we can state that these persons are currently undergoing counseling and preparation after which they will return home to join their brothers and our sisters. Inspector General of Police Suleiman Abba has charged Nigerian youths to refuse being used as political thugs by politicians. He also called on the youths to distance themselves from all facts, all acts capable of impacting negatively on their personality and that of the country. Abba said this shortly after he received members of Arawa Youth Forum at the force headquarters in Abuja. He also charged the executive of the youth group to sensitize all the youths in the country on the need to fully participate in community policing activities in their areas. Responding, the leadership of the Arawa Youth Forum expressed the determination of its members to work for a violence-free general election. The People's Democratic Party on Tuesday announced the lifting of the suspension of its former chairman, Bamanga Tuko. National chairman of the PDP, Adamo Muazo, confirmed the lifting of the suspension at the presidential rally of the PDP in Yola, the Adamawa state capital. Tuko was suspended in December 2014 for dragging the party before the court in his attempt to reclaim the chairmanship of the PDP, where he was forced to resign in January last year. The Bauchi State Governor Isa Yagoda has accused the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Bala Mohammed, of being the sponsor of the youths who spelt as stones uh, president at President Goodluck Jonathan in Bauchi. Yagoda made this through his Deputy Chief Press Secretary Dan Lami Babantako, saying security reports indicated that the attack on Jonathan's convoy at the Bauchi People's Democratic Party presidential rally was masterminded by Abuja politicians. The governor explained the true state of things in his position as the Chief Security Officer of the state after he received all the reports from security agencies of various organs and he has the right not to tell anyone the source, Tanko says. He said the FCT minister had acted in a manner that offended the northern culture of respecting the elders and that he had betrayed Yuguda as a mentor. Asked if he, the feud between the governor and the minister would not mar the chances of PDP in the general elections, Dan Lamy said PDP in Bauchi belonged to Yuguda. Former Defense Minister Theophilus Danjima has called on Nigerian politicians, especially those vying for political offices in 2015, to refrain from attacking personalities in their campaign ahead of the general elections. Danjima, who once against toying with the peace of the nation, admonished members of the political class to abide by the rules of the game. And my prayer as that we will have 
a transparent and peaceful election and that the campaigns that are going on now have uh, the degree of virulence in attacking individuals must be reduced. We need peaceful elections, and we cannot have it if we continue not to talk on issues, but individuals saying slanderous things about each other. The former defense minister my was prayer, on the sideline of the inauguration of Conquasia City in Kano State. The National Electoral Commission, INEC, has extended the ongoing distribution of permanent voter cards in the Federal Capital Territory by one week. It's now to end on February 14, rather than the eve of the election, as suggested by some Nigerians. Resident Electoral Commissioner for the FCT, Jacob Jatau, said at a news conference that 55% of registered voters have collected their PVCs as against the 42% earlier recorded. He is aware a keen on heating between 60 and 70 collection rate before the close of the exercise. There has been actually some uh, noticeable improvement in the distribution of the cards. We are still facing challenges. We want to require that and urge the press to keep on informing people that these cards are going to be distributed. The time we have given is to the end of this week which is uh, 31st of uh, uh, January for the distribution to end at that places. However, however, I want to say that uh, when we consider the things, we may uh, go on up to the first week of February to distribute these cards, most likely. So, uh, but that one will come out towards the end of this week that will give that, will pass that information. We'll take a break now and we'll be back with more stars. Don't go away. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, would you, come, would you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we we'll break them down, explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. Welcome back. Please note you can also get all of our top stories on any of our social media platforms on Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash cool TV news and our, our Twitter handle is at cool TV news NG. We're also streaming live on YouTube. It's trending on youtube.com forward slash cool TV. Live a space and news. Moving on now, the National Hospital has beefed up security in its facilities in the aftermath of attempts by striking health workers to disrupt its operations. This, according to the hospital management, is because doctors have been attending to patients in spite of the nationwide strike action. Chief Medical Director of the National Hospital, Jeff Momo, said at the news conference in Abuja that the management would not tolerate any attack on doctors on duty. A few came around to see what was happening, those who are the union leaders. But as I said, we have provided security and we have provided uh, uh, excellent coverage in every ward to make sure that nobody was harassed. So uh, we do not have the experience of somebody attacking somebody on duty because they are, they, they, they are trying to provide care. As I always say, the person you are taking care of today may be your brother tomorrow. You never can tell whose brother that person is. And Nigerians should see every other person as their brother or sister. We should be our brother's keeper. I, I cannot understand why somebody who is taking care of an unconscious patient will walk away simply because a strike has been called by your union. This does not follow international best practices. 
Update on stories outside Nigeria is next after this break. Stay with us. From time immemorial, women have birthed life, shaped character, and by extension, influenced the society. Morimi of Ife, a Morton of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election. How ironical. Women being so powerful, yet have few grounds in decision making. I see you as a and I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women in politics. A woman will be bold enough to stand up and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Only on Core TV News. Welcome back. Just outside Nigeria, before we go outside Nigeria, the Ministry of Communication Technology held its fourth industry stakeholders forum in Lagos. At the event, the Minister of Communication and Technology, Omobola Johnson, laid out her achievements in the last four years to the stakeholders. A few are e-commerce, seed funds, connectivity, supporting networks, among others. Right, whether voice or data before, we brought them into this digital economy with voice services for the very first time. One thing we're very proud of, and this is a very major, a very big uh, um, achievement, is that we have mapped the country and we know exactly where the white spaces are, where there's no connectivity or little connectivity. And this is what you see here. It's, you can actually access it now on the USPF website uspf.gov.ng and it shows where there are gaps in the country in terms of access to voice connectivity or data connectivity and it's really done by community uh, and so we see the our mobile penetration moving from 68.5 percent to about 96 uh, percent percentage of population with internet access has grown from 29 percent to 52 percent and that's really what's driving this e-commerce success that we're seeing the early success we're seeing in the e-commerce sector uh, the cost of broadband subscription has dropped from 93,000 to 55,000. It is still expensive, we understand that. But I think that what you're seeing is a downward, to, uh, uh, is, a, is, is, a, is the price are going in the right direction. Because this is one of our, our objectives, to so bring it down to the affordable cost for all Nigerians. Broadband penetration has increased from 6% to 8%. Very slow in starting, but we know that we're building up the momentum and we can get to that risk. We believe that we're still on track. And we're supporting, um, you know, 70 startups in the tech and idea labs in both Lagos and Calabar. We're in the process of establishing two more labs. Honorable Minister of Communication and Technology, Omobola Johnson, there. Outside Nigeria now, the Ebola epidemic is decreasing, but it's still present in a third of the areas of the three worst affected West African nations, according to UN Ebola coordinator David Nabaro. Nabaro was speaking at the African Union headquarters as leaders gather on Thursday, a day ahead of a summit meeting where Ebola is a key issue for discussion. The worst outbreak of the virus in history has seen nearly 9,000 deaths in a year, almost all in the three West African countries of Liberia, Guinea and Sierra Leone, and sparked a major health scare worldwide. The three nations have been devastated by the outbreak, which began in December 2013, but all have seen recent signs that the virus is on the wane, with the number of new cases dropping weekly. And that wraps it this hour on Core TV News. Do join us again at the top of the hour for more stars. I'm Nifemi Ogun Thanks for being there.